Hi guys, it's Camille from Pareto Education and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we will discuss palpitations. Palpitations are a very common presentation. It's a symptom that patients present with in general practice, in A&E and even ward-based patients. So you must be familiar and comfortable with palpitations, how to manage them, how to deal with them. Palpitations is essentially when the patient can feel the essence of their heartbeat. The heartbeat may be louder, faster than normal, or more intense. There are a few causes of palpitations that you should understand. Cardiac with AF, psychological, anxiety, stress response, endocrine, things like hyperthyroidism, and infection associated with the fever of the infection. Associated symptoms with palpitations include syncope, loss of consciousness, chest pain, and shortness of breath. In Palpitation history, it's important to ask about things like social history as well. Alcohol intake, because that can influence palpitations. Recent stressful life events, stress, these kind of things. And finally, with the palpitations history, you must safety net the patient. Tell them if their palpitations increase, are associated with chest pain, shortness of breath, leg swelling, any worrying symptoms, and they must seek immediate medical help. So now we will go on to palpitations history and we can see this in action. Hi, my name is Camille and I'm one of the clinicians at the practice. Can I take your full name and age please? My name is Andrew Johnson and I'm 52 years old. Nice to meet you Andrew. So how can I help you today Andrew? I wanted to discuss um, a feeling of my heart beating very, very fast. Okay. It's been going on for a little while now and it's been getting more frequent and I thought I'd just come and get it checked out. Yeah, I think you've done the right thing in asking for some help and some input from us, and we'll definitely try and see exactly what we can do to help you. Thank you. And to get to the bottom of this, I'd like to ask you a few more questions, if that's okay. So you say you, you know, your heart beating fast. Can you describe it a little more in more detail? For example, how long it lasts, how, when it comes on, that kind of thing. Well, it seems to come on quite randomly. Okay. Um, you know, I could be in the middle of doing something or I could even just be sat down doing nothing at all. Yeah. As for how long it comes on for, that's very difficult to answer. But before it used to come on for maybe about a minute, but now, you know, it can last for a long time. Okay. In fact, sometimes it feels like it's never going to go. Okay. Are you experiencing it right now? No, not at the moment. No, you know, okay. And how long has this been going on? It's all been going on for about three or four months now. Okay. And you say it's increased in frequency, happening more often, more times during the day? It is. Um, I work a very busy job, so I haven't really had the time to come through. Yeah. But I hope you can help me. Yeah. And does it just feel like it's, the heart is beating harder, or does it also feel like it's beating faster as well? I think it's just feeling like it's beating faster, sorry. Okay. And. Are you, do you become aware of this happening all the time? Or are you alerted, for example, via a smartwatch or anything like that? I mean, I first realised um, because of my s smartwatch and it said, you know, alerted me to, I think the term is called arrhythmia. Okay. And, um, um, but it doesn't really tell me much more, but now I'm, I can definitely feel it. Okay. And when it's beating like this, um, you say you've not noticed anything particular surrounding those circumstances, you're not doing anything in particular, you're not doing anything, you're not eating anything, taking anything? Not that I know of. No. I mean, uh, nothing's really changed in my life, okay. you know, that could explain these symptoms coming on. Okay. That I think anyway, but I might be wrong. Okay. And, and once this happens, are you able to go about your day or does it affect it? I mean, it makes me feel really uncomfortable. Mm. You know, when I get these palpitations, you can imagine, I'm just a little bit in shock at the fact that I've got them and my focus is all about trying to get rid of them. So we'll discuss more about that in a little while exactly what potentially could be going on but there's a few more questions I'd like to ask if that's okay. Okay. Are you experiencing any chest pain as such when this is happening? No, no chest pain. Okay. Any shortness of breath at all? No. No, okay. Anything that making you feel dizzy or anything like that, you know? No dizziness. Okay. And do you feel any, any other symptoms, for example, any, you know, reflux or abdominal pain, 
any sort of clumminess? No, I just I just get this this heart problem. Yeah. So you don't feel sweaty or anything like that? No. No, okay. I so, feel fine really. It's okay. But it's just my heart. Okay. Have you been you know, you've said you've been feeling well in yourself recently, is that correct? I've been feeling alright. So no sort of long term fevers or being under the weather or anything like that? No, not okay. really. Alright. And what about things like stress? Have you been under any sort of stress recently? Anything life events, anything like that? I mean work has always been quite busy. I'm a I'm a HGV driver. Yeah. Um, you know, as you know, work's really picked up for us. Yeah. But it's not particularly stressful. I quite enjoy it. Okay. Um, get to see much of the country, so it's not it's not a problem. Okay. And have you been feeling any other symptoms, such as um, feeling jittery, feeling a lot of energy, difficulty sleeping, that I'm kind of thing? A, I'm a good sleeper. Okay. Um, I definitely don't feel that I'm jittery. Okay. And what about other sort of symptoms? Are you getting any headaches? Um, you know that kind of thing. No, not really. Okay. So, this funny heart rhythm you say, you're finding it difficult to describe exactly when it comes on and come on, come on any time. Sometimes it's associated with certain things that you know yourself that if you were to exercise, your heart rate goes up. Mm. Is it similar to that or not at all? I think it's different. Okay. Um, because that would make sense. Yeah. You know, but, but here I can just be sitting down, having a cup of coffee and... Yeah. You know, bang, it just yeah. starts. Okay. Anything else that you know? I know some people feel, you know, heart palpitations when they take, like, for example, high dose of coffee, anything like that in your life? I mean, if I'm going to be honest with you, I do drink a fair bit of coffee. Mm. Probably drink about six or seven cups a day. Okay. I've been told maybe not to drink as much as I do, but because I'm on the road driving a truck, um, I need to keep myself awake for the safety of myself and others. Yeah, that's understandable. What about other things such as energy drinks, anything else in high in caffeine? I sometimes take some energy drinks, you yeah. know, Red Bull and other things. Yeah, okay. So potentially that, and we ask this of everyone, is there anything else that you potentially take, you know, recreation drug-wise? No, no, no not okay. so. Okay. So more broadly speaking, are you otherwise healthy? Have you got any other medical complaints or things that you see a GP for? No, not particularly. I mean, I have been told that I've got high blood pressure. Okay. But I haven't really, they haven't given me any treatment yet because they want to see, you know, whether my, my lifestyle can help that with that. Okay. So you've not got any other diagnosed conditions, diabetes, any heart? Uh, problems in the past? No. Any heart attacks? No. Any strokes? Anything like that? No. Okay. Have you ever had any clots in your legs? Anything like that? Oh God, no. Nothing no. like okay. that. All right. Do you take any medication at the minute? No. Any pain relief? Anything over the counter? No, just if I've got some pain, I would take some paracetamol, but nothing at the moment. All right. And is there any family history of things like, you know, mentioning earlier stroke or leg clots? No, but there is, you know, a family history of heart attacks. Okay. Um, you know, that's definitely an issue in my oh, family. Right. And um, I just want to make sure that this isn't, you know, something sinister for my heart, really. Okay. So, in terms of finding out exactly what's the reason for this, you know, based on your history, we'll have to do a few tests. Right. Um, but just a few questions bef before we finish on to that. You mentioned your family history um, and heart attacks. What, what kind of family are, we, uh, are you talking? Are you talking uh, parents or...? Yeah, my parents and okay. actually two of my siblings. All right, and what kind of ages were they? Well, my, my, my dad passed away sadly because of a heart attack. Yeah. Um, my mum's had several, Okay. but she's still with us. And uh, my sibling, you know, my sister Sarah and brother Alan, they've both been diagnosed with angina. Okay. Do you suffer from any... You said you didn't feel from no, chest pain? No, no. Okay, and what age was your dad when he passed? Oh, so uh, he was he was only sixty one. Sixty one. Okay. And in terms of otherwise, in you know, in yourself, you say you've got no other symptoms. It's mainly just this. Yeah. Uh, funny heart rhythm that's bothering you. Okay. All right. So based on everything you've told me, these palpitations of funny heart rhythm, it sounds like something called atrial fibrillation potentially. Right, okay. Okay, so this is just when the heart rhythm, the electrical impulses don't travel as well through the heart and this causes the normal rhythm of the heart to be interrupted, 
to be slowed or to uh, beat in an irregular fashion. Right, okay. And this is probably with the, you know, the clapping that you showed me, it's probably why there's a difference. It's not a regular heartbeat that we would expect. It, so just a lub dub. Yeah. Which is a normal heart rate. It definitely yeah, doesn't feel like that. Okay. So as part of this, we'd like to do a full workup with yourself. Okay. Because with this, potentially, we want to diagnose it uh, because you may be at increased risk of other serious conditions. Right. Okay. So nothing to worry about at the moment. So as part of the workup for this, I would like to do an ECG, um, which is basically when the electrodes are connected um, to your chest and to your arms and legs. Mm. And this is quite a painless way to fully enable us to see exactly how the heart is pumping. Mm -hmm. As part of this, we'd also like to do some blood tests as well, okay. see your cholesterol, that kind of thing. Check your diet, blood sugar levels over a longer period of time, HbA1c. This just enables us to do a, like a risk profile for yourself. Okay. Enable us to put you on potentially some medication that would you know, help lower your risk of any sort of heart disease or any cardiovascular disease as well. Right. Because unfortunately, if it is atrial fibrillation, as I'm suspecting, you're at increased risk of things like stroke, leg clots as well, which can travel as well. All right, okay, that's, um, yeah. that's concerning, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Something that I want you to consider in the interim while we're having all these investigations sorted, sort of a safety net, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you're sort of getting chest pain, if you're seeing that leg, one leg is red, swollen, painful, if you're sort of getting any sort of weakness in one side of your face, unable to speak properly, unable to raise your arms, these are all sort of red flag signs mm. uh, that we consider that you would automatically call uh, 999 or present yourself to any for. Okay. okay. Um, is that clear? Is there any questions that you have? No, I'll keep all of that in mind, um, but, but no questions. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time and hopefully that's answered most of your questions and we'll take it from here. See you soon.